Hello, hello, hello. What is going on? This is Youth Power Hour. Come on, somebody. I hope you're excited to hear the word of the Lord tonight. My name is Emmanuel Day, and I'm super excited to bring it to you today. Listen, whoever is watching, wherever you're watching from around the world, you are welcome. Go ahead and drop your name and where you're watching from in the comments. And hey, listen, if it's your first time here, once again, you're welcome. All right, let us know where you're watching from. And hey, follow us on all our social media platforms. That's Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, at AOCCNYC, and yes, on YouTube, at AOCC Winners House as well. How is everybody doing tonight on this evening? I'm super excited to, to be here. I'm super excited to continue this series on this or that. We're continuing our series that's been going on for about two weeks now, and uh, we're bringing forth a powerful message. We're bringing forth a very scary message. In fact, the message that, that we're bringing tonight, truly, it, it was the beginning and the culmination of this series that we're in. Uh, as God gave me the, the, the revelation and word for this message today, about a month ago, and it's been hard to prepare. It's been hard to, to, to talk about. It's been hard to preach because I believe it, it brings up some, some tough thoughts and conversations for a lot of people. Uh, so I'm going to tell you right now, to share this link. It is imperative that you share this link. I don't really expect this video to get a lot of likes. I don't expect this, this video to get a lot of comments because, like I said, it's gonna spark up a very hard conversation. But, but this, this or that series uh, has been paramount, has been pivotal to the time that we're in and to the things that, that God wants us, wants us to know and to do in life. And the title of this teaching today is called The Way You Seek the way you seek. And it is extremely important to understand the way you seek. So go ahead and share this link. Go ahead and share this video. Hey, go ahead and like and continue to comment so a lot of people can, can see it and the YouTube and Facebook algorithms can get it all out there around the world. And we're going to go ahead and pray right now. Father God, we thank you for who you are, for your power and your might. God, there is none like you. You're King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, God. We thank you, God, for what you're doing in our lives, God. We thank you, Lord, for the revival that's broken out. We thank you, God, for, our, for what you say about us and the things you, you want for us in the future, God. We pray, God, even in this moment, that as we dig into Scripture, Lord, that your name is glorified. God, we pray for God that our hearts are purified, that our faith is stirred, and our spirits are lifted into action, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Father God, I just pray, Lord, that this word comes clear and concise, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And may you get all the glory today, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Go ahead and comment amen if you agree in prayer as well. So like I said, the title of this is called The Way You Seek. And I really want to talk about hearing from God and going against God's word. Hearing from God and going against God's word. And one of the most dangerous things in the body of Christ is when Christians have a desire and they go ahead and seek confirmation. I'm not wasting any time getting to this message. I'm going right at it. One of the most dangerous things in the world is when Christians have a desire and they go to God seeking confirmation. Like I said, this may be a hard combo. Because it may cause you to question some of your decisions, question some of your thoughts and some of your motives and some of your actions. Hey, it may even have you question your entire walk with God. Um, but I truly believe it's a conversation that, that God is looking for us to have. Uh, and, and in a way, we need to check our heart, check our motive, and check exactly what we do. Because one of the things that's clear, as a, there, there's a simple fact in life. As a believer, you hear from God. As a believer, you hear the voice of the Lord. That's fact. Other facts include this in life. Not only do you hear the voice of God, but you hear the voice of Satan as well. But you hear from your heart as well. You hear from your flesh as well. So those are facts that you can't really disregard. In fact, take this note down. You hear other voices to the same degree as you hear the voice of God. You hear other voices to the same degree as you hear the voice of God. And, and this is so key, this is so important, and this is why you need discernment. 
In fact, the whole purpose of even having discernment to a certain degree is not because we automatically know when God is talking to us. No, it's because, hey, we hear different voices and we need to be able to discern, to figure out, to perceive and figure out who's God. Uh, if God's speaking to us in this moment, if our heart's speaking to us or if Satan is speaking to us. This is why discernment is so important, because we really don't know. Because we really aren't always certain. Because it's really not always clear if we're hearing something from God. Uh, and as we talked about many times on this platform, one of the reasons why the sermon is needed and required is because we hear three voices categorically. The voice of the spirit, the voice of the satanic, and the voice of the secular. Which is, uh, the secular is where we kind of group, you know, our flesh and, and the world and pretty much anything outside of what God's telling us and what Satan is telling us. So discernment is needed in this area. Discernment is needed for these categories. And I used to think that the voice of Satan is the scariest and maybe the most dangerous voice to listen to or, or the scariest or the, or the most dangerous voice to beware of and, and, and have in your mind. But the more I think about it, uh, the, the more you think about it, honestly, it might be the secular. It, it, it might be the voice of your own heart. It might be the voice of your own flesh because your heart follows what your flesh wants. And a lot of times we may make decisions that our heart wants and say it was God. A lot of times we may pray for certain things, ask God for certain things, or believe it for certain things, and we believe it's something God wants for us, but yet it's not his will and it may be our own flesh and heart's desire. I'm telling you, I'm starting to believe one of the scariest voices to listen to is the voice of your own flesh. And it's scary because you don't have to be a bad person to make wrong decisions. I'm going to say that again. You don't have to be a bad person to make wrong decisions. In fact, very similar to that, not every good thing is a God thing. Not every good thing is a God thing. And believers constantly find themselves pursuing good things that were never God's thing for them. Believers constantly find themselves in certain jobs or certain churches or certain relationships or having certain material things that are really good, that don't cause any harm, but not necessarily God's thing for you. And it's really all predicated on the way you seek. All in the name of not Jesus Christ who people go after these things or say these things, or maybe they do but all in the name of confirmation. Believers constantly find themselves in a lot of good and good things that aren't God things, all in the name of confirmation. The way you seek is important. And that's what we want to talk about today. Are you seeking clarity or are you seeking confirmation? Are you seeking clarity or are you seeking confirmation? The way you Seek. I wish somebody could write that in the comments right now. The way you seek. I can literally already feel the tension of this conversation. I can literally already feel the tension of this, this sermon, this teaching that we're talking about today because it's a big topic. It's a topic that's not really talked about. But quite frankly, like I've just said, you know, we hear the voice of, we hear many voices just as clear as we hear God's voice. That's what the sermon is needed for. So it's really important that you're seeking after what God wants for you the right way, uh, the, 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 the way that's, that's not uh, clouded or, or clouded in any type of way by your own desires, by your own flesh. And I wanted to walk us through uh, a story in the Bible which really paints this picture type clearly. And I encourage you to read this entire story. We cannot read this entire story. We do not have time. This entire story actually uh, spans over three chapters in the Bible. Um, but I encourage you to go after this teaching, to go ahead and go into the Word of God and look and read this story and study this story for yourself. I want to take you to the book of Numbers, chapter 22, and read a couple of verses here for you uh, right now. So Numbers, chapter 22, from verse 1, it says this. <clears throat> then the people of Israel traveled to the plains of Moab and camped east of the Jordan River across from Jericho. Balak, son of Zippor, the Moabite king, had seen everything the Israelites did to the Amorites. And when the people of Moab saw how many Israelites there were, they were terrified. The king of Moab said to the elders of Midian, 
This mob will devour everything in sight like an ox devours grass in the field. So Balak, king of Moab, sent messengers to call Balaam, son of Beor, who was living in his native land in Pethor, near the Euphrates River. His message said, look, a vast horde of people has arrived from Egypt. So he's talking about the Israelites. He's talking about God's people. A vast horde of people has arrived from Egypt. They cover their face, they cover the face of the earth and are threatening me. Please come and curse these people for me because they are too powerful for me. Then perhaps I will be able to conquer them and drive them from the land. I know that blessings fall on any people you bless and curses fall on any people you curse. Balak's messengers, who were elders of Moab and Midian, sent out with money to pay Balaam to place a curse upon Israel. They went to Balaam and delivered ba Balak's message to him. Stay here overnight, Balaam said. In the morning, I'll tell you whatever the Lord directs me to say. So the officials from Moab stayed there with Balaam. That night, God came to Balaam and asked him, Who are these men visiting you? Balaam said to God, Balak, son of Zippor, king of Moab, has sent me this message. Look, a vast horde of people has arrived from Egypt, and they cover the face of the earth. Come and curse these people for me. Then perhaps I'll be able to stand up to them and drive them out of the land. But God told Balaam, do not go with them. You are not to curse these people, for they have been blessed. The next morning, Balaam got up and took Balak's off officials. He told uh, Balak's officials, go on home. The Lord will not let me go with you. So the Moabite officials returned to King Balak and reported, Balaam refused to come with us. Then Balak tried again. This time he sent a large number and even more distinguished officials than those who were sent the first time. They went to Balaam and delivered this message to him. This is what Balak the son of Zipporah says. Please do not let anything stop you from coming to help me. I will pay you very well and do whatever you tell me. Just come and curse these people. But Balaam respond, responded to Balak's messengers, Even if Balak were to give me his palace filled with silver and gold, I would be powerless to do anything against the will of the Lord my God. But stay here one more night, and I will see if the Lord has anything else to say to me. That night God came to Balaam and told him, Since these men have come for you, get up and go with them, but do only what I tell you to do. So the next morning, Balaam got up, saddled his donkey, and started off with the Moabite officials. But God was angry that Balaam was going, so he sent the angel of the Lord to stand in the road to block his way. Listen, I just read a lot of verses to you, but we're going to break that down right now. Take this first note down. You can know the voice of God, but you also need the heart of God. You can know the voice of God, but you also need the heart of God. You also need to know the heart of God. See, Balaam in this story, he knew God's voice, but he didn't have God's heart. And sometimes like Balaam, we can have spiritual gifts. We can fast. We can pray. Heck, we can bind and loose. But it's possible for us not to have the heart of God. And, and, and that's really crazy. In this story, we see a man of God, a man who has a relationship with God, and they come to him to curse God's people. And he does the right thing, and he takes it to the Lord. And God tells him exactly what to do, not to curse them, and not to go with these people, because these are his people that they want to curse. He tells them, they come back to him, and then he takes it back to the Lord. Now, that seems all good, that seems all right. But like we said, he knew God's voice but he didn't know God's heart. And, and how do we know he didn't know God's heart? Verse 13 says this. The next morning, Balaam got up and told, the Bala, uh, the, uh, told ba, uh, Balak's officials, go home and the Lord will not let me go with you. The Lord will not let me go with you. Now listen, that sounds good. That, that sounds good and, spirit, and sounds like a good and spiritual answer. But really, if you read between the lines, what he's saying here is, listen, Go home. I will love to do this for you, but God is not letting me do it. I, I, I would love to, to do something like this, but, but God does not want me to. And they somehow, however he said it, they, they knew that his desire was to do it, but he was being held by God's will. And that's a good thing. But 
maybe the way he said it, maybe his heart posture, maybe because they just know who he is, they decide to come back. In fact, even in him saying that, they knew that he can be persuaded. And there's a lot of times, hey, we may know God's will, we may, we may even speak it and, and want it, uh, but, but the enemy knows, but people know, but situations know that you can be persuaded with even something more desirable. So, so, so they came back to him. Those officials went back to the King Balak and they said, hey, listen, he's not going to do it. And Balak said, hey, listen, we're going to go harder and persuade him even more. I'm sending even more distinguished people. I'm, I'm, I'm sending more money. Somehow we're going to persuade him. And they came back to Balak. And, and after he got clarity from God, he goes back to God to seek confirmation. Why? God already gave you clarity. And when he went back to God to seek confirmation, guess what? Guess what the scary thing is? He got it. Verse 20 says that that night God came to Balaam and told him, since these men have come for you, get up and go with them, but do only what I tell you. Now, this sounds so confusing because the night, the other night, God just told him, don't go. God gave him a very clear answer and said, don't go. But Balaam went back to him. Balaam went back to him and God changed his answer and says, hey, go with them, but do only what I tell you. Could it be in your life that God has told you what to do? God has told you what way to go, but you didn't move until you heard what you wanted? Balaam sought after God. Balaam questioned God. Balaam went back into prayer to hear from the Lord, not because uh, God hasn't spoken already and gave him a very clear answer, but possibly, more likely, because, hey, whatever he wanted was not what God wanted, and the ante was up, and there was more to gain, there was more money, and he was waiting for God to just give him a yes. Could it be very possible in your own life that God has told you a certain way to go, a certain thing to do, a certain thing to say, and you didn't move until you heard exactly what you wanted to hear from God? Because that's exactly what Balaam done, has done here. If God has given you clarity, why are you seeking confirmation? I'm going to let that marinate. And I know this is hard to hear. And, 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 and I know that this is hard to, to really think about because a lot of us, heck, even myself, have made some decisions where it seems like, hmm, God probably told me one thing and... Maybe I just kept praying for confirmation when I shouldn't have. Maybe I was not going to move and I was going to be a little reluctant until God said something that I wanted to hear. Could it be very possible that you did not obey God until God told you what you wanted to hear? And, and this message has been hard to, to prep. This message, I've been running away from talking about this because this is a very hard conversation to have. Like I said, I think it's possible that we've all been victims of this. Heck, I know myself personally, number one victim to this. I'll give you a personal example. In fact, today's Wednesday. This past Saturday, I went to a, a baby shower slash gender reveal, uh, gender reveal, reveal for one of the uh, couples in our church. And uh, I got the invite to this reveal about two or three weeks ago. And I remember being excited, like, hey, listen, you know, um, we don't know the gender of your baby, but I'm going to prophesy to you the exact correct gender of your baby because God's going to tell me when I ask him. And we know with the couple, we made a nice little joke about it. Um, and, and leading up to the gender reveal, um, I was like, man, you know what? This is going to be a boy. I know it's going to be a boy. I can just feel it. Something in my gut is telling me it's going to be a boy. And I'm going to pull up to this gender reveal. I'm going to wear a blue shirt to send a little message that you know where I stand on this 50-50 is going to be a boy. Uh, this past Saturday was that reveal. I woke up Saturday morning not even thinking about this case, not even thinking about the baby shower, not even thinking about the gender. I woke up Saturday morning and the first thing God tells me is, it's a girl. It's a girl. And I'm just like, oh, okay. Um, are you sure? Because for the last two, three weeks, two and a half weeks, I kind of felt like it was a girl. God, are you sure? And I'm like, all right, God, if you say it's a girl, I guess it's a girl, but I don't really know. 
And, and, and I think about 10, 15 minutes later, uh, I'm scrolling on my phone and I see this baby boy. And, and then uh, I saw like three, four, five, six baby boys just looking at different things throughout the day. And I'm like, you know what, God? It's going to be a boy. You know, you're telling me uh, that it's going to be a boy. And, and, and I believe that because I know what I heard this morning, but now that I'm keep on asking you about it, I'm seeking for more confirmation, uh, it's a boy. I know it's going to be a boy. It's a thousand percent going to be a boy. And, and I waited to, to get another confirmation. And I was like, you know what? I'm sticking with it. It's a boy. And I get to this baby shower. And it was, it was long. <laughs> it was very long. Uh, the, the, the gender was not revealed to the end. And lo and behold, somehow, some way, I have the microphone in my hand. And I'm doing the three, two, one countdown for them to pop the balloon and figure out the gender of their baby. And I'm super excited. And I'm, I'm ready. And, and with other people, we're like, yeah, it's definitely going to be a boy. We're ready to go see this thing. And I go ahead. I say, three, two, one, go. They pop this balloon. And pink sparkles are flying everywhere. And I was never in my life so confused, so distraught, so frustrated, so embarrassed, so just out of it because I thought it was going to be a boy. I, I could have sworn that God told me early in the day and confirmed it like six, seven times that it was going to be a boy. And, and in that moment, I realized, you know what? I waited till I heard what I wanted to hear to make a move. I waited till I heard what I wanted to hear to believe God finished telling me what I needed to know. I waited, even though God gave me clarity, I waited till the confirmation of what I wanted was heard to go with it. And there's a lot of times in our lives where we're seeking and we're asking and we're praying and we're wanting and we're believing and we're hoping and we're putting our faith behind something for God to move in a certain direction, for, for God to show us something, for God to open up a certain and specific door. And God gives us clarity one way and we're just like, ah, God, I don't really think that's even you. That might just be my flesh talking. That might just be a thought. Let me just keep on praying. Let me keep on going till the thing I want is confirmed. This is why it's so important that you're not seeking confirmation. I, I don't want people to be seeking confirmation. This talk is about clarity or confirmation. Don't seek after confirmation because you'll get it. Because you'll get it. But is the confirmation you're looking to get exactly what God wants you to know, exactly what God wants to give you. Knowing God's voice is good, but please don't be like Balaam, don't be like me this past weekend, and neglect God's heart. Do not neglect God's heart. It's not the confirmation we should be seeking, but clarity. Take this point down. If God already made it clear, you don't need to pray about it. If God already made it clear in your life, you don't need to pray about it. This is a very tough combo to have. Look at Numbers 22 from 18 to 19. God already made it clear to Balaam. Hey, listen, uh, he wants to curse my people. Don't go. Don't go with them. Don't do nothing that they want to do. But look what happens to Balaam. Verse 18 and 19 says this, But Balaam responded to Balak's messengers, Even if Balak were to give me his palace filled with silver and gold, I would be powerless to do anything against the will of the Lord my God. But stay here one more night, and I will see if the Lord has anything else to say to me. So, so, so Balak already said, hey, listen, let's throw some more money at him, all right? Let's see if we can persuade him. Let, let me bring some even more honored people. And, and Balaam sees this, and he's like, you know, there's a lot of money you got here, um, and you're also really well-respected people. Even if Balak gave me his whole palace, now, now, now he's expressing his desire. Hey, listen, even if you gave me, I don't know, $10 million, because I want $10 million, I can't go against what God says. And God already spoke. God already spoke to him. But yet he goes on and says, but stay here one more night. And I will go ask the Lord. But he entertains them for one more night. And, and reading this, I had to question, well, well, Balaam, what changed? 
What changed between when God told you no and, and this moment right here? The only thing that changed was the amount of money they threw at you. The only thing that changed was the people who came towards you. So what changed, Balaam? Did God change his position or have you been persuaded? And that's the question we have to ask ourselves. Has God changed his position on some of the things you're asking for, some things you're believing for, or have you been persuaded? Or has the ante been up? Or has it become even more desirable for you? Listen, if God has made something clear, you do not need to pray about it. If God's made it clear that you need to fast, you don't need to pray about it. If God's made it clear that you shouldn't go a certain place, you don't need to pray about it. If God's made it clear that you should not take a certain job or should take a certain job or be in a certain relationship or not take a certain relationship, or if you're not to smoke or you're not to drink, or if you're not to do this or not acquire this material thing, if he has made it clear, there is no no reason for you to pray about it. He said what he said, and he said what he said, and what he said is what he said, and that's period. If he has made it clear to you not to watch, not to invite, not to go, not to think about something, there is no need for you to pray about that thing. Balaam pretty much told them, hey, listen, this is what God wants, but this is not exactly what I want. And sometimes we think that's a good thing to say, depending on the situation, depending, depending on the conversation. But it would have been a whole lot better if God told him, hey, listen, Balaam, this is not what I want. Do not curse him. And Balaam goes back to them and says, hey, I do not want to go. That's the difference between someone who has a heart that's after and is aligned with God desires or a heart that's after and aligned with their own desires. He went ahead and he said, the Lord will not let me do it. What he should have said is, I do not want to go. If God does not want to go, then I do not want to go. If God does not want me there, then I do not want to be there. That's how one speaks when their heart is aligned with God's heart. But when Satan sees that your heart is not connected with God's heart, he's going to up the ante. They brought more money towards him. They brought more nobles towards Balaam. And that's what happens in certain, certain situations. Things look more desirable. Things kind of look better. You kind of frame and, and shape certain people in certain places and, and come up with reasons why you should and reasons why you can. And it becomes more desirable because... Because that's exactly what your heart wants you to do. And, and, and they came to Balaam with more nobles. And they came to Balaam with more money because they noticed that he can be persuaded. Because they saw that even though that he's saying this is what God wants, he does not necessarily want that himself. So will you listen to the voice of the flesh? Because he was so easy to be uh, because it was so easy for him to be persuaded, he went back to God for permission. Because he was so easily persuaded, he went back to God for permission. Take this note down. Don't go to God to gain permission. Go to God to figure out what's pleasing. Don't go to God to gain permission. Go to God to figure out what's pleasing. Listen, God gives clarity to what's pleasing to him. However... We sometimes go to God seeking permission for a confirmation. And this is why this is a very dangerous conversation. We sometimes go to God seeking permission for something we want, seeking permission from our own heart's desire, for our own heart's desire, seeking permission for a confirmation. Are you seeking his permissible will? Are you seeking what's pleasing to him? There is a very big difference. The way you seek, the way you seek is extremely important. Are you truly seeking for clarity? Are you truly seeking for direction? Or at this point, are you waiting for God to confirm the thing that you want in your life to you? That's exactly what happened to Balaam. Don't go to God because you've been persuaded by outside forces. Don't go to God asking for permission to have it. No. Go to God to know what's pleasing to him, what's pleasing in his heart, what's pleasing and, and aligned to his will. See, what happened to Balaam is he prayed for that confirmation and he got it. He prayed for the confirmation and he got it. And then, I mean, well, I mean, that doesn't really sound like a bad thing. I know that's what some people are saying. It doesn't really sound like a bad thing. Well, I'll tell you what, it was a bad thing. 
You can go ahead and finish those three chapters, but even in uh, right after where, where we read, as we saw, God was angry with Balaam. As he was going that morning, God was angry and he sent an angel to stop him on his path. And as you furthermore read into that conversation, this is a story if you guys ever heard of the talking donkey. This is where his donkey started to talk to him. Why was his donkey talking to him? Because he did not see the angel on the road, but the donkey did. So this is a man who, who's already hearing and speaking from God clearly. And he's on the road to do something God did not necessarily want him to do at first. And on this road, he doesn't see the angel of the Lord, but his donkey did. What happened between the night before and that night when he went back for permission, for a confirmation he wanted, and that morning? Between then and then, his own spiritual senses decreased. You can hear from God clearly, but you didn't see the angel on the road? So much that the donkey had a whole lot more spiritual discernment in that moment than he did? It is very very scary if you're just going ahead and believing and seeing and wanting your confirmations to come through than more than God's will. Balaam's disobedience dulled his senses and he could not see the angel on the road. Thank God that the donkey did. Listen, God's clarity leads to confirmation. All right, God's own clarity leads to confirmation. Do not pray for, uh, for, for confirmation. Pray for clarity. If you're going to be praying for anything about your life, for your life, for any situation, don't pray for confirmation. Pray for clarity. It's, 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 it's very important. Pray for, for, for God's will. Pray to know God's heart. Pray to know Jesus Christ himself. Pray to see Jesus in the situation. Pray for the light of God to show. Because praying for confirmation, it can provide tunnel vision. It, it, it can close your ears, it can close your mind, it can close your heart to some things that God is leading you to know, leading you to do, but maybe you don't want to do it, and when you hear God say it, you kind of disregard it, like, no, that can't be God, that's just my fear, that's just my doubt, that's just me thinking. In fact, heck, that's Satan, and uh, I'm not going to believe what he says. No. Now pray for clarity. Pray for clarity. God's clarity will always lead to confirmation. His clarity will continuously lead to confirmation. Pray for his will. Pray for his heart. Pray for the word of God to illuminate your life and your journey. Listen, this is what Psalms 119, 105 says. It says this, Your word is a lamp to guide my feet and a light for my path. So allow the word of God, allow Jesus, the word, to light up your path, to, to be the guide for your feet to provide clarity. It's the word that's going to bring clarity in your, on, on your journey. That's what the scripture is saying. The word itself will be the light that will bring you clarity. So every step you take, you can take in certainty. Every step you take, you may even take steps of faith, but it's not by your own volition. It's from the clarity that comes from the word of God. It's from the clarity that comes from Jesus Christ himself. Let's God's clarity lead to confirmation. Take this note down. Seek the heart of God to know the will of God. You need to seek the heart of God to know the will of God. This is so important. This is something you need to take away. It's about the way you seek. What you need to do is seek the heart of God. What you need to do is seek God's desires. Listen, I don't pray, and this is not, a, this is not like a braggadocious me thing. It's something I've learned from experience is I'm done praying for God to grant my heart's desires. I'm done with that. Why? Because the Bible tells us in Jeremiah that the heart's deceitful. The, the, the Bible tells us that the, the heart lies to us, that our heart is fickle, our heart is wicked. Uh, our, our heart doesn't even know what it wants each and every single day. So I don't want God to pray for my heart's desires. In fact, I know some desires of my own heart, and I don't think that's even good at all. So it's, it's not about you praying to God, hey, God, grant my heart desires. When, when people say that, nothing against nobody, I sometimes cringe up. I'm like, ah, something about my heart is not always pure. 
You know, something about my heart is not always correct, but, but I think it's important that we pray, God, make your desires my desires. God, make your desires, make the things you want, make the things of your heart to be the things of my heart, to be the things that I go after. That is something we should be praying about. Not for confirmation, not for our heart's desires, but pray for clarity of God's will, clarity of God's heart, clarity of what God wants for, our, for us and for God to make his desires our desires. You need to be seeking the heart of God. You need to be seeking after God's heart. Listen, Jeremiah 29, 13 says it like this. If you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. If you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. The other versions say this. Hey, if you seek me, you will find me. It's all about the way you seek. Are you seeking to find God? Are you seeking for God to tell you what you want to hear? Clarity versus confirmation. Do not seek the confirmation. Seek clarity. And you're only seeking clarity when you're seeking Him. He says, seek for me wholeheartedly and you will find me. And as you find Him, on the road to finding Him, you will find everything else that you need. That's the Matthew 6, 33, 4. You seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and its righteousness. The, the, the righteousness of the kingdom of God is Jesus Christ. The righteousness of the kingdom of God is Jesus Christ. Seek him wholeheartedly and you will find him. And all these other things that you think you need, all the other things that you want, heck, all the other things that God has in store for you will be added unto you. But don't go after just seeking them because you're going to miss when it's very key, it's very important to seek after God. It's all about the way you seek. And Father God, I just pray today for everyone who is listening and everyone who is watching right now, God, that we begin to seek you again, that we have a stronger desire for your will, a stronger desire for your heart, a stronger desire, God, for the things that you're passionate about. Father God, we pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that from today we will, we will come to you, God, not looking for you to give permission to the things we want, God, but looking to you to know what pleases you, looking to you, God, to know the things of your heart in the name of Jesus Christ, God, we pray for everyone who is listening and watching right now that we no longer just pray for you to confirm the things that we want. And we no longer just pray for you to confirm the things of our heart's desires. God, make our heart's desires your desires. Make, make, make your desires our heart's desires, Father God. We want to desire the things that you desire. Break our own heart for what breaks yours, Lord. God, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that today we have a different view on things. That we would no longer just say, well, God wants me to do these things. God, I pray that we begin to want the things you want. We begin to desire the things that you desire for us, for your kingdom, for our families, for our situations, for our future, for our finances, for our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. God, we pray for everyone who is watching, Father God, who's felt like, hey, maybe they made decisions of God out of their own confirmation. God, we pray for mercy right now. We pray for repentance, O oh Lord, for, for those of us who've made decisions out of our own confirmations, willing and begging for you to confirm and give permission to the things we want, God. We pray for mercy for going against your will. We pray for your hand of mercy, Father God, to rule over us in the name of Jesus. Pour out grace upon us, Lord, to be obedient to your voice. Pour out grace upon us, Father God, to even discern your voice clear, Father God. Pour out grace, O oh Lord, on us, Lord, to just be in line with your will. May we not fall out of line, Father, for the things that you want for us to have in our own lives, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. And listen, if you're watching right now, and maybe you've, you've made some decisions uh, that you, you believe was the Lord, and it was confirmation for yourself, and you've now strayed away, or you don't even know the Lord yourself, I want to pray for you right now. I want you to repeat after me, in prayer. And go ahead and pray this. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for sending your son to die for me on the cross. Jesus, come into my heart, fill me with your spirit, and change my life forever. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Amen, amen, and amen. Come on, somebody. Have you been blessed today by the word of the Lord? Listen, if you just prayed that last prayer, I want you to text SAVED, that's S-A-V-E-D, to 718-312-2253. I'll say it again. That's SAVED, S-A-V-E-D, to 718-312-2253. Come on, somebody. Congratulations and welcome into the kingdom of God. And listen, I hope everyone's been blessed by today's message. It is a tough conversation, a tough topic, a tough thing to, to discuss and learn from. But I pray that we just continue to press towards God's perfect will for each and every one of us. Very few and small announcements, but big announcements to make this weekend. All right. In two days, we're having our women's retreat. Come on, somebody. I know you ladies are extremely excited. Those of you who are going, be blessed. Have a great time. We will see you back on Sunday on the 21st, which will be our youth takeover service. I want to thank everyone who has already signed up and is serving this entire weekend. Listen, if you have not signed up to serve, what are you waiting for? Let us know what department you want to serve in. And of course, we have another You Take Over weekend that's going to be in December, the, the weekend of the 10th, the Friday, and the 12th, the Sunday. So be ready for all of that. Also, December 5th, we're starting our young adult service at 1230 p.m. Get ready <clears throat> as God is really about to use us in a powerful way as we step out in boldness for the Lord in this season. So December 5th, if you're from the age of 16 to 30, let us know, get connected, and come and be ready for our young adult service that start on December 5th from 12.30 p.m. That is all the news for you. Of course, the Science Sound that's coming next year. Next year, Science Sound, be ready for that. That's March 19th, 2022. All right, get ready. More information will come out for you on that. But that is everything that we have for you today. I hope you've been blessed by the word of the Lord. And remember, it is your story for his glory. Mm -hmm.